Hello friends, welcome to CEC Gurukul Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk on one of the burning question, one of the burning issue of today's world. We are going to talk on international uh, terrorism in detail. And friends, for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios, Dr. Amna Mirza. Dr. Amna Mirza is Assistant Professor in Department of Political Science, SPM College, University of Delhi. Dear friends, she is a prolific professor. She has authored numerous books as well as she actively participates through different forums and uh, her participation makes her more active. We are privileged to have her in the studio and uh, we are very sure that we are going to get in-depth knowledge on today's topic and uh, we are somewhere going to uh, resolve the mysteries behind uh, international terrorism. So friends, uh, we would like to welcome our guest Dr. Amna Mirza once again but before that we would like to share with you all that if you have any question in mind, feel free to talk to us through our toll free number. Our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. I repeat, our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Amna Mirza, and let's try to understand the topic in detail. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the lecture. Hello to all the listeners. The topic that we will be understanding today is international terrorism, its causes, consequences, and what are the debates. Dear listeners, let's understand, whenever we open newspapers, there are news of terrorist bombing, there is academic research on understanding what happened in 9-11, what does the world look after 9-11 and to add to that, there are conferences, academic debates that are flourishing in the field to understand international terrorism. At the very beginning, let me tell you that even after so many years of research, debate on the notion of terrorism and understanding its implication at the global level with the concept of international terrorism, there are somewhere no recognized uh, debates. In the beginning, let us understand what is terrorism. Now, there are multiple ideas. Many people think differently about it. But there is one consensus in the accepted definition of terrorism that majority in the field understands that one man's terrorist activities curtails freedom for the other. Terrorism applies and implies that is use of force, use of weapon. Weapon force a vested interest, vested goal in the end. Let me bring to you Louis Henkin who says that terrorism is a useful legal concept. Now, this definition is very critical in understanding the impact of terrorism on the international system and the security establishment in particular. Now, whenever we look at extortion, arson, there are stories of regular crimes, all of it sparks our imagination. It leads to anxieties, fears, in amongst us understanding that terrorism is use of violence weapons for a vested goal and this is why any researcher any student expert of security NGO whenever they try to understand terrorism there is a broad phenomena broad processes that are going on with it now of course there are several definitions of it but one common thing that is a consensus in the definition of terrorism is that it is highly controversial and also somewhere very politicized in nature. So whenever we look at terrorist activities examples be it be any country be it be in Iraq or be it be somewhere in Afghanistan. Terrorism 
is always implying violence for creating anxieties in the people. So what you see here is that there are huge amounts of debates that are going within this. So terrorism today has become a very significant topic of analysis in the international relations study. So today terrorism not only just invo involves use of understanding where does the violence come from but also understanding what are the activities of the organizations, what are the goals that they are using, what are their aims, what are their methods because there has been a leap in the all these modus operandi of actors of terrorist networks. Today friends terrorism is a non-state actor. By non-state actor I imply that these activities be it be militias, you may call some may call them revolutionary, some may look at them as a national liberation movement. They can be various understanding of what people actually mean by them but one common thing that is common in this debate on international terrorism is there has been a leap and this leap has made it a non-state actor. Now the world has accepted that today terrorist associations, organizations, they pose a threat to state because somewhere there is a debate on how do we legitimize their use of violence because what they see as justified use of violence the state and its apparatus may not consider it as justified. So what may be positive for them is seen as a in negative parlance by the state. So within this framework one has to see how specific organizations which may be seen as a terrorist group but the others may see them as a national liberation movement or a revolutionary. So this is why what we see here is that today terrorism is operating at a much more multipolar, much more hot debated conceptual level. Today why we call terrorism as a non-state actor that needs further analysis because its impacts cut across border. It does not have a time connotation. Terrorist activities and incidents can come any time. And of course when it comes there are no preparations, no plans well in advance to understand who carried out the acts of terrorism and the gross, gross uh, murder on the people. So what we see here is that terrorism today and the claims of it that come along they are a significant factor in understanding global politics. Now who do terrorists target? Let us take an example of any country where terrorist activities have taken place. The targets are innocent civilians and this is what makes terrorism different from a freedom fighter because the freedom fighter would definitely not intentionally kill innocent citizens because preparator of gruesome uh, acts act, activities of terrorism would not try uh, would not try to harm innocent people so terrorism what we can say here is it is a means a tool for achieving an end an end can be anything it could be occupying a foreign country it could be teaching lesson to a foreign country for some past uh, happening so all of it are multiple issues that are related to understand the concept of international terrorism. Now let us come to the fact that if the mode of operation of any terrorist activity is harming innocent people and when you try to harm innocent people your main aim is you are trying to influence the policy making, you are trying to influence the 
state apparatus. You're trying to terrorize the state apparatus. You're trying to create an atmosphere of fear amongst the people and policy makers. Why? Because you want to terrorize them. You want to pressurize them to give in to their demands. Now, all this goes on to making of a the process of that we are studying at large that is international terrorism. Now, let me tell you my dear listeners that terrorism is not just a 21st century phenomena because even in the past activities were in use of fear, use of force was used in order to pertain and get the demands fulfilled. Let's talk about the reign of terror during the French Revolution. So, what we see here is that the line of distinction between a revolutionary and between a terrorist activity is somewhere very thin because there are multiple debates that are going in to get the terrorist activities forward. Now, let's come to our next point. Next point would be what causes terrorism. Now, of course, we have seen that how terrorism is an outrageous attack carried out either by individuals, by groups or even at times by associations and at times there are even examples of state-sponsored terrorism. So, now with this, we can divide the causes of terrorism as per three layers. One would be situational, second would be strategic and third would be individual. The onus, the force to engage in violence, to engage in the activity, to create fear can come from any of these three layers. And once this comes, what happens here is that there is use of weapons just to terrorize people. Now, one world incident that indeed led to great studies, great debates and even it is continuing today to understand is international terrorism the a, a fight for a just cause or perhaps there is an activity of terrorizing the state yes friends you guessed it right this is september 9/11 september 9/11 uh, after the aftermath of that led to a big concept that is war on terror so since september 11 international terrorism has emerged on the top of national and international security agenda. Today, international terrorism is widely perceived as a severe and a very real threat to world peace. Today, international terrorism is seen as a process, a threat that necessitates international alignment and cooperation based on unprecedented level. Let's take an example of any international organization. The first thing on the agenda to foster world peace is the need to have united fight against international terrorism. So be it be ASEAN, be it be United Nations, be it be European Union. Dear listeners, when you look at their international agreements, for alignment, for cooperation, the fight against terror, the need to secure world peace is always on the agenda. Because a high degree of cooperation cannot be established without common basic denominator. And today, one of the common basic denominator that is international terrorism. Today, outside intelligence, military circles, effectiveness of apparatus, all of it can be understood by countries only when they are together to understand the clear, broad and a very objective criteria to what defines terrorism and how can they put together a united front in order to combat terrorism. So when we look at all these measures and guidelines to both uh, 
international organizations as well as in the charter of countries what we see here is that somewhere international community also must establish a binding normative system to determine what is allowed and what is not allowed what is legitimate and what is not legitimate when violence is used for political objectives so what we see here is that terrorism as a deliberate use of violence against innocent civilians in order to gain political goals now these goals could be nationalistic socio economic ideological or at times even religious so in defining terrorism in this above framework it becomes essential for the international community to debate and decide what actually can be defined as a terrorist activity or what can be just dismissed as something as a freedom fight or a revolutionary movement and this is why the study of international terrorism becomes significant in international relations all the more because concepts are interlinked because ideas are joined because debates are happening and above all when ideas clash what is positive and what is negative is always debated so what we see here is that today terrorism is definitely a threat in international relations it reflects the tensions of global politics and those who study and respond to it like young listeners like you all today have to factor in this understanding of terrorism which is indeed a colossal task now when we try to identify the goals of terrorism with the causes of uh, terrorism one thing that is really common in all this is that somewhere daily life is impacted human society does not have answers to many questions and issues any terrorism international terrorism debates raises up the debate whether terrorism should be considered a criminal act or as an act of war this is still a very contested issue and let me tell you once again our dear listeners there is no consensus on the issues states have applied their own policies in trying and convincing alleged terrorist suspects and this is common against common in every country today every country is coming up with laws to deal with issues of uh, criminals or combatants in any international terrorist or war on terror act so all these things be it be murder arson extortion whenever we read it in newspapers one thing that is common is that it is threatening the internal social order it is posing challenge for personal and national security it brings forward new challenges for world peace and world harmony so these intended acts to achieve vested goals could be can be seen at a much more larger strategic level this is why we try to understand the causes of terrorism as strategic situational or individual now whenever we see that terrorism today has become as a non state actor so this non state actor requires diplomacy at times and at times even use of force to combat it so whenever we look at examples in our everyday life we find that in order to tackle terrorism at times we are working on networks at one times there are debate on strong laws at times there is a debate on making diplomacy stringent enough so all these things are common and this is why we say that terrorism is a significant non state actors because the threat it is posing for countries today countries are jointly reacting to it and their reaction is somewhere common that is be it be a developed country or be it be a developing country you never know when does a highly organized networked organization comes forward and attacks you 
and once it attacks you, what happens here is you need to have a joint front. So, cutting across countries, there is a debate for strong laws, there is a debate for stringent measures and all this is asserting at a time when there are definitely instances that vested organizations and associations are posing great danger through their actions for world peace. And in order to achieve their goals, somewhere it may call, be called as indoctrination, somewhere it can be called as blind ideological commitment. The organizations, the individual units and the individual members who are part of these associations that try to harm innocent people, there is a stringent commitment that let us make it happen. Whenever we hear about uh, dro uh, dropping a bomb, hijacking a plane, killing innocent people, let us think about, when the about the preparators of these crimes. There has to be stringent ideological commitment. Now, to give a religious color to any terrorist activity, this is also a debate and it is going on that can terrorism be uh, situated to a particular geographical realm. These ideas are also being debated because pseudo military methods of operations of terrorism indeed are challenging our established system of norms and laws. Today international conventions are that are accepted by most countries of the world. They are saying one thing that terrorism is a basic tool of joint international struggle and this is why one, one what we can say a side that comes forward in this war against terror or in this debate and lesson to understand international terrorism is that it gets countries with even with uh, if differentiating interests even with conflicting interests to come together because the threats are to get common for all. They can be deliberately targeted and this is why today countries are getting together to understand laws of war and uh, this deliberate targeting of civilians. And then with this comes into uh, debate that how impactful is this entire operation or maybe at least in principle of this entire harming of citizens, harming the state entities. So what we look at that whenever uh, any incident of this kind happens, in the large gain, in the larger goal, what they want? They want to influence the state, its policy making through terrorizing, through this entire apparatus of fear, through this entire apparatus of creating an atmosphere of anxiety and there is a debate again here too that in some cases it may succeed whereas in some cases the terrorist organization or an association may just disintegrate and may not remain stable in the longer run. So what we see here is that today countries are coming up with mechanisms to group up terrorist associations. Today countries are coming up with attempts to expand what can be actually accepted as terrorism that is to include uh, say uh, attacks against soldiers, to include, uh, include say this cross border infiltration because borders are sacred for any country. International relations are based on this idea of borders, borders, national boundaries. They also show the pride, the prestige of the state and this is why today whenever any country is trying to debate terrorism, these things are coming up in the state policy making also to tackle terrorism. While when we look at the victims of terrorism, well it is of course very sad that just for certain vested political gains certain organizations and their supporters legitimately think that they can take up violence in their hand, they can take up weapons in their hand to harm ordinary people, to harm common people. Somewhere the debate 
for tackling international terrorism also filters down to the third tier from international from state to the grassroot level people have to be vigilant enough to understand the situation the circumstances and after applying these considerations try to understand their role as to what can they do in combating of international terrorism or perhaps how can they contribute in reducing the scope and impact of terrorism because one act of terrorism is seen to be related to the other processes in society too because what we see that whenever a terrorist organization attacks there is a counter measure also and sadly in the attack as well as in the counter measures too what who suffers the more most it is the ordinary people the innocent civilians and all this requires that in this modern asymmetric warfare the yes, sdl listeners i'm using this word asymmetric warfare because we don't know the threat we don't know the enemy attack can come any time whereas in a symmetric warfare which it involves army navy military at least we know the size the amount of damage the enemy can do but here in this asymmetric warfare we don't know so what is needed here is that a normative rule must be set to address limitations on these new state actors there has to be a need to differentiate between a guerrilla warfare and terrorism that is violence against civil uh, civilian and all these legitimate concerns can be met when we see how significantly international terrorism has risen in international relations so defining terrorism is critical in ensuring the same normative standards currently enforced on states that are applicable to non state actors defining their use of violence is permissible and when it is prohibited and paradoxically what is currently prohibited for states and is yet not prohibited for organization so dear friends when we try to understand terrorism it just does not raise or lower the obligations of state to behave normatively and certainly does not place additional legal burdens also upon them it simply is asking for making organizations accountable for their actions under the same value system that is currently obligating the states reaching a broad international agreement regarding once again the definition of terrorism may require international community to think about applying laws of war that forbid deliberate targeting of civilians but allow for deliberate attacks that is in accordance with other regulations of one's enemy's military personnel the definition what we see it may vary but yet there has to be based on accepted international norms because it seemingly uh, is giving subnational organizations a uh, certain legitimately using violence in order to achieve their goals and when we see that this distinction between good and bad violence good and bad terrorism it is very thin so therefore this terrorism is terrorism no matter what so this has to be taken very seriously because whenever violence happens bloodshed happens the pain of losing the pain the trouble that comes along with the loss of our near and dear ones with the attack on our religious political economic institutions it is felt by all so therefore all these things many view that the effort to achieve a broad international agreement on terrorism is possible because somewhere the pain is borne by all today there are several conventions that are coming up to in order to deal with international 
terrorist issues for example security council resolution 1566 which has been unanimously accepted by the council members in october 2004 that is countries get together with their prior disputes rise above their own interests and reach an agreement in the near future regarding international de uh, definition of terrorism resolution 1566 without serving the idea of a definition itself already establishes one basic principle on which an international definition can be built it stipulates that terrorism is a crime against civilians which in no circumstance can be justified by political philosophical ideological racial ethnic religious or other considerations now friends when we uh, see that alongside this debate in terrorism there is this debate of new trends in terror tactics and these new trends in terror tactics are significant to see why terrorism is a non-state actor essential to study it is significant to see how the world post 9 11 is grappling with war on terror it is significant to see how domestic laws in countries are being changed to cater to international terrorism so post 9 11 international terrorism both in respect of a stimulant as well as in terms of response we all with agree has gone tactical changes it has far it has spread sadly far beyond and traditional uh, threats that agree so be it be, whichever examples that we see what we see here is that there have been macro as well as increasing number of micro attacks there has been increase in casualties that happen as an impact of terrorism be it be pakistan afghanistan philippines your iraq all of it no country is safe from the threat of terror and since two, uh, 2001 the impact of terrorism has been greatly felt by all countries there has been great amount of deaths that have been reported there have been great amount of incidents that have taken place in all these countries where casualties have occurred great amount of uh, movies have come up in order to understand the study of terrorism and the responses to terrorism where somewhere terrorism is seen one cause leading to another effect one effect generating another cause and so on that the vicious circle continues but sadly in this vicious circle there has been increase in people kill the geographical expansion of terrorism has definitely generated new tensions for international relations so when be it be when we look at southeast asia world or be it be when we look at europe and north and east africa or be it be the west uh, asia all these are accompanied by a shift in the pattern of attacks and the tactics employed by the terrorist group and in terms of casualties the countries uh, are seeing maximum impact of terrorism so let's uh, whenever we are trying to see that be it be afghanistan or be it be our own country india be it be uh, philippines all these uh, activities together are harming the world harmony there are many non state actors that are operating outside the states and due to the target hardening by the states attacks are being majorly directed against the soft target by target hardening i mean how the states have become strong in terms of punishment in terms of capturing in terms of coming up with new uh, laws to deal with these threat uh, with these threats and what is happening sadly they are aggressively targeting soft targets that is increasing civilian casualties and the targets are sub selected to maximize impact and publicity so what we see here is 9 11 yes it is a significant uh, issue in world history too because the decade since 9 11 the bulk of terrorist activities has been directed against civilians 
unlike previous years where security forces and symbols of the government were the primary targets. It has expanded the scope of targets for terrorists at its, as it is much more difficult to penetrate in security apparatus in the government institutions as compared to uh, harming civilian targets. And this is why what we see here is that today every public infrastructure somewhere is under civilians because terrorists carried out detailed recognitions of prospective targets in order to identify the loopholes of our security architecture before targeting anyone. Another shift in the patterns of attacks in areas uh, afflicted by um, uh, insurgency is the increasing frequency of targeting killing members of a particular community, grassroots leaders, security forces, informers, all this is becoming that is depleting members of the particular community in order to send out a larger message. The shift in targeting pattern from government military to civilian targets indicate that the terrorists are attempting to spread intimidation, to create a permanent state of fear, psychosis that we can say leading to disruption of socio-economic, political and economic activity and above all discouraging foreign investments in the target countries because always remember capitalism in international relations requires peace for free flow of goods and services, for free flow of capital. Now it is always seen that somewhere western way of life and democracy are not accepted to certain uh, terrorist organization or to certain non-state actors and for them in order to seek revenge on this imposition of a new way of life on them terrorist activities are increasing they also believe that economically bleeding a country is one of the way of achieving gradual victory over their enemies another reason that is for targeting more civilians is that terrorist actions against security forces were receiving less attention and had become routine affair occurring in far-flung areas mainly away from media glare so in order to sensationalize attacks in big cities and also at the same time receive much more media attention then isolated incidents in peripheral areas of the countryside. This is why today when we see suicide bombing in major cities, large number of attacks in hinterland of countries and with reduced incidents on the borders, they are indicative of the trend of changes in work and operation of terrorist network. Now adaptations in tactics and technological upgradation are two sides of the same coin. Why? Because terrorist activities have now today transcended hijackings, use of suicide bombers, IEDs that is improvised explosive devices have now become the favorite weapon for terrorists across the globe. Terrorists have refined their tactical skills and the attacks are well calibrated now and they involve a careful selection of targets and meticulous planning over a long period before actually executing the attack. IEDs are fabricated in a much more professional manner and a host of innocence, innocuous looking daily items such as what we can see a mobile phone, maybe a bag, they are used for preparing the IEDs. Less amount of explosive material is used in a device which is packed with so much sharpness to maximize the impact of explosion and cause casualties. Terrorists have reduced their dependency on 
military grade plastic explosive like C4 or RDX because there are studies being shown in order to escape control and monitoring by security agencies and rely more on commercially available material that is nitrates etc. So all these are certain things that have been pointed out in the media. We may google that there are daily news about it. We may search the internet that there are several organizations working on how there has been advances in technology and there has been an increased use of remote control devices and mobile phones for detonating IEDs. There are reports that due to enhanced countermeasures and use of technology to detect explosive at times even uh, female bombers are used to uh, ensure that somewhere the impact is maximum and in order to avoid detection. Now all there are so much uh, you know we all must learn from new sources. Uh, we have also seen that there are movies also to debate and make us explore the same. So similarly what we are seeing that terrorism today its impact, its method of operation all of it is witnessing significant change. Fewer amounts of explosives uh, when denoted on an airline would be sufficient enough to cause an air crash. So and there have been uh, instances that have had this and of course there have been attempts to, of assassination on crown princes. There have been attempts uh, to in order to hijack planes. So all this shows that explosive devices concealed are kept under so many things and they have been successfully been able to be it be 9-11, uh, be it be attacks in 2010, so many examples. All these show that there has been attempts in order to innovate, in order to bring forward new kinds of mechanism in order to ensure that the impact of this process of creating fear are much more. Terrorists are now found equipped with the state of art navigation devices that is GPS and passive night vision devices for navigation during night. Now all this is reported daily in the media that how they have enhanced the use of cyberspace and satellite phones for communication. Now this also brings us to another point of analysis that is how globalization with the rise of communication and technology is much more a debated concept. At one point of time it has made the world much more smaller, at one point of time it has led to free flow of goods and services but at the other point, other side also the very same innovation in technology, communication, satellite phones they have been misused by certain vested terrorist groups too. So what we see here is that there is propaganda, online recruitment of prospective foot soldiers, all of it has been told to us through media, through so many other stories, through so many other examples, through so many other research too. Social networking sites also at times are used for using coded communication and in order to that there is new forms of communication that are often made use of. So what we see here is that plethora of radical initiatives have come forth and these radical initiatives have become a platform for spreading uh, self-motivated or perhaps a mechanism to spread out ideas in order to carry out attacks. Almost all major terrorist groups today are relying on cyberspace because how do you get your actions and activities done? without communications. Almost all major terrorist organizations today rely on technology and communication for propaganda because let's accept we are living in a world which is called as a global village and in this global village one thing that communicates one country to the other that connects one nation to the other is this free flow of news and information. Information today is a public commodity. At the same time there is proliferation of self-motivated and propelled cells. 
Another universal trend that we are seeing in global terrorist attacks is the execution of attacks by small cells of self-motivated individuals who are based in the country where the attack is perpetuated. These individuals are often first-timers and they easily evade the security by intelligence and security agencies. Minimal interaction with their handlers and freedom of decision in selection of targets and scale of attacks also comes forward. So what we see here is that terrorist group who sponsors these attacks are content with small scale attacks and all of it is essential to understand that how in the wake of 9-11 today terrorism is a much more complex phenomena. International terrorism needs deeper understanding because resources, time, activation, all of it has emerged and it has op operating like a systematic terror, a systematic terror activity. So what we see here is that today this phenomena is impacting our lives every day. This today international phenomena is posing new challenges for the countries every hour and with this, with this operation of there are multiple terror outfits across countries. So it has become difficult to distinguish between insurgents and terrorism as both complement each other in methods employed and in terms of their impact and in terms of greatly influencing the ideologies and that is their targets. Now when we see here is that several individual and isolated cells are supposed to be are uh, there are daily news that are coming up that they are present in certain parts of the world and they are modeled on the platform on the idea of lone wolf that is they live in isolation but at the same time such cells have either been self-motivated by watching radical forces propaganda material or they have been brainwashed now all this is operating and what is essential that how as a non-state actor terrorism has a resemblance to the bigger threat that is posing for international relations so whenever we look at uh, this entire incident of uh, terrorist bombing this entire incident of killing of uh, in civilians this entire process where one country is in under the threat of global terrorism and other countries also need to get together the impact of global terrorism has led to incidents where individuals impacted by radical uh, propaganda and global events wherein we must also always keep in mind 9-11 and the entire process of war on terror followed by it these things are always linked and this present contemporary time is always there for us to understand, to make us see how things are related. Today, force is being deployed in countries and today there are issues that one needs to see that how occurrence in one part of the world leads to happenings in other part of the world. What happens in one part of the world is definitely having an impact on the other part of the world. And this is why we see that today world is like a united globe and this makes terrorism all the more essential to study. So when we see that there is a terrorist bombing in your Paris, at the same time there is a larger debate in other parts, uh, in other countries that is there is a need to for global efforts to combat it. Let's bring into discussion a significant factor that is terror funding, financing. How is money generated? Who funds it? So what we see here is that there are global efforts at, at identifying and freezing channels of terrorist fundings. Terrorists are relying heavily on sources like narcotics, counterfeit smuggling. All this has to be tackled with. And this is why this has led to growing nexus between criminals and terror groups. And there are reports in the, in the parliaments of several countries. That is how do we cut down this link. And at the same time, 
that how there are vested organizations too which may be anti national they are serving to serve to uh, fund the terrorists and all this is has to be seen that the funding to terrorism in the part of that monetary order which is not accounted in our uh, in our actual accounting system so in addition terror groups are also relying on mobile and internet banking facilities and of course there are cases of vested hawala channels to avoid detection by intelligence agencies and all this is happening so the need of the hour for the world is to get together and understand and spend considerable amount of energy to understand who funds these donation what actually gets into funding for terror groups and how do we curtail them and this threat is across the border from the gulf to the europe from the asia to the africa that is today countries are attempting to identify who sponsors these individual nations who sponsors these in, uh, individual actions and these transfers they are also posing a challenge for global intelligence agencies and this is why we see that today when we understand security security has also changed itself the debate on security has also changed itself from just a traditional dimension that is your attack by army navy military to a non traditional dimension today when you are trying to understand the security of a country one aspect that is needed is to understand by the global intelligence agencies is to tap down who funds these extra vested activities what are the sources of finance for this use of force for this use of fear against the space space apparatus and this is why when the threats are cutting across borders the enemy is faceless intercepting each money flow to understand the magnitude of bank account transfers it is essential and this is why today countries are also taking strong digital and financial and fiscal measures in terms of freezing the bank accounts or in terms of uh, tracking down the sources of restricted funding in order to understand the money trail that actually goes in and gets the financing of terror networks at the same time when we are seeing that this kidnapping for ransom robberies all that somewhere attempts are being being made by several countries in order to understand the terrorism aspect so the global response to terrorism after 911 what we have to see here is that 911 it has led to world powers getting together to define international terrorism view it as a violence on countries view it as a challenge for domestic and international apparatus and at the same time view it as one of the power shifts that is getting together because countries today regardless whether they belong to the north or to south developed or developing they are seeing terrorism as unacceptable and the ideological objectives with which terrorism goes and with its underlying causes today countries post 11 the international community is largely coming up with an approach to usher in cooperation to present a strong and unified front against terrorism and the principal position notwithstanding is that terrorism is unacceptable violence is unacceptable the environment and anger against terrorism is not only led by international opinion but also at the same time grassroots movements same time there has to be brutal crackdown on terror groups because they have turned the world into a eye for a eye that is leading to complete chaos and bloodshed so therefore there has to be a unified attempt in order to have a collateral approach in order to ensure that the collateral damage international terrorism causes it is curtailed with and some of the counter terrorism measures that uh, are being used by international community individual states after 911 that is today countries are united on the war on terror today countries are united in banning 
in, uh, vested organizations that are killing innocent people in the name of their vested goals. Today, countries post since 9-11 attacks are united in putting forward strong laws as a symbol of the fight against terrorism. Today, countries are united in debating and in curbing sources of finance for terrorist activities. Today, countries are also coming forward as an emerging trend in order to ensure that civilians are updated well in advance. Today, media is also playing a very significant role in order to update the masses about the measures, causes, impact and consequences of a terrorist network, its issues, its aims and its activities. Lastly, but surely not the least, whenever we try to see international terrorism, we have to be aware of two mistakes. That is, terrorism does not have a religious connotation. And secondly, terrorism is not merely a 21st century phenomenon. Any act of violence against the civilian, against the state, needs to be seen at three levels. Situational, strategic, individuals. When we understand these three layers of causes, then we will be in a better position to understand that what are the fault, fault lines of the insurgency. Coalition forces and joint core movements of solidarity are essential in order to ensure that the world puts together one voice that is say no to terrorism and let peace prevail. Well, there's no thank you, and thank you so much for giving us uh, this productive session. Friends, if you have any question in mind or if you feel to give your feedback for this particular lecture, do write to us at info.cec at nic.in. We are taking your leave with the promise that we are going to meet again very soon, and uh, uh, we are going to discuss uh, on uh, some of the another important topics. So keep watching us and keep writing us. Thank you for watching CC Gurukul Live Lectures. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you.